So the panelists for today are, I'd like to introduce Dr. Mahesh Kamte, who is the professor and head of uh, Department Pediatric Neurology at Tehaz JN Medical College, Belkari, Karnataka, and is also the secretary of uh, AOC in 2023-24. Then the next one is Dr. Ratna Puri. She is a renowned senior consultant in uh, genetics at Sir Gangaram Hospital. Uh, Dr. Vijay Jaiswal, pediatric endocrinologist, professor and head at uh, LLRM uh, Medical College, Meerut. Uh, Dr. Rachna Segal, pediatric neurologist and professor, Department of Pediatrics, Vardhaman Medical College and Sapleton Hospital. Dr. Anup Kumar, who is a pediatric neurologist based at Aligarh, also Secretary of Pediatric Neurology Chapter UP. Dr. Sapna Gupta, Associate Professor, MLB Medical College, Hansi. Dr. Kshitij Bansal, pediatric neurologist at Kanpur, who also happens to be the, to be the Joint Secretary of uh, AOPN UP Chapter. And Dr. Neera Jatawal, who is a senior consultant in pediatric cardio cardiology at Sir Gangaram Hospital. So, uh, Ajay, can you start sharing the screen? I'm sharing, ma'am. Yeah. So while uh, we will uh, we were preparing for the panel discussion, uh, James Martin. Uh, okay. So uh, in the next twenty minutes or so, we'll go through the story of an extra chromosome twenty one. And while we were preparing for this panel discussion, James Martin. Uh, was already winning an Oscar on 13th of uh, March 2023 for his role in the movie An Irish Goodbye. So uh, you, uh, we all can uh, uh, acknowledge the fact that uh, people, individuals with Down syndrome have uh, come a, far, a long way and they have tried to make their place in their society. And without wasting much time, I'd like to call upon our first speaker, Dr. Kshitij Bansal, our first panelist, Dr. Kshitij Bansal, to please discuss the current epidemiology of Down syndrome. Thanks a lot, madam, for having me here. So uh, Down syndrome is uh, one of the most co uh, common chromo uh, chromosomal abnormalities in humans. Uh, the recent occurrence is around 1 in 800 babies born each year. In 2015 alone, it was present in 54 lakhs individually individuals globally, and that was the number that was actually diagnosed. Much more number if we count the people who have never undergone uh, chromosomal testing. Uh, this syndrome was named after John Langdon Down, who fully described the syndrome is around, uh, syndrome in 1866, and uh, around 90 years from that time, we got the genetic uh, uh, details of this disorder. Uh, Maternal age has a uh, significant effect on the on chances of having a pregnancy with Down syndrome. Like, for example, at age 20, the chances uh, 1 in 1,441, which increases to 1 in 959 by the age of 30 years. By the age of 40, it is 1 in 84. And as we reach uh, 50, it is around 1 in 44, which is quite a significant number. And around 70% of children with Down syndrome are born to uh, women 35 years of age and younger. Uh, what are the characteristic features we see in a child with Down syndrome? Dr. Anup Kumar, may I request you to please take on this uh, issue? Thanks, Dr. Prajita. So there are lots of uh, types of dysmorphic signs seen in the Down syndrome, like flat facial profile is there. Uh, you can have these flat facial profile 90% cases, poor morose reflex in around 85% cases, hypotonia in around 80% cases, hyperflexibility of large, large joints, loose skin on the back of the neck. And we can have the slanted palpable fissure, dysmorphic pel pelvis on radiographs. And uh, we can have single palmar crease. Along with that, uh, uh, in more than 95% of the cases, we, we have the mental retardation, growth retardation. And in the later age of the life, we can have the Alzheimer, early Alzheimer disease. Congenital heart defects like uh, atrioventricular canal defect, ventricular septal defect, ASD, P PDA, tetralogy of fallot, they are the more, more common uh, congenital heart defects. The patient can have hearing loss, ophthalmic uh, defects like congenital cataracts, glaucoma, strabismus. The patient, 5 to 10% cases can uh, have the epilepsy, and uh, around 5% cases, it can have the gastrointestinal malformation like duodenal atresia, husband disease, and uh, hypothyroidism, leukemia, atlantoaxial subluxation with subspinal cord compression. They are the commoner, less commoner uh, 
clinical features. If we see the uh, other uh, physical characteristics, like we can have the stunted growth, umbilical hernia, and the uh, narrow roof of the mouth, flat head, we can have the proportionally large tongue, we can have the abnormal outer ears, we can have the shortened hand, short neck, uh, we can have the clinodectaly that is called as bent uh, fifth uh, fingertip, we can have the brush field spots in the iris, and we can have the uh, single transverse crease, palmar uh, transverse crease. Child may have the protruded tongue or uh, strabismus or undescended testis. So, uh, Ajay, can you show the, the diagram? Next slide, please. Yeah. So, you can uh, uh, have a look on the picture. In this, uh, you can see the up slanted palpable fissure, flat nasal breeze, nuchal mm -hmm. fold is there, single palmar crease is there, clinodactyly of the ear, finger, and hypotonic baby. Can you, uh, so genetics in uh, Down syndrome is a very interesting phenomenon, and uh, I would request Dr. Ratna Puri to discuss the genetics uh, uh, of Down syndrome. Thank you very much, Aprajita. So in Down syndrome, we have an extra chromosome 21. And today is Down syndrome day because it is the 21st of March, 21-3. So there are three chromosomes 21. You can see these pictures. We have 23 pairs of chromosomes. So, and each is a pair. So they are identical. And you can appreciate that here, chromosome number 21 is three. In 95% of cases, this can be a free trisomy 21, as you see here. In about three to 4% of cases, the extra chromosome 21 is piggybacked onto another chromosome. So it could commonly be chromosome 13, 14, 15, or it could be any of the other chromosomes. And this is called a translocation Down syndrome. The importance of understanding all this is if you have a trisomy 21, there's absolutely no need to do a karyotype of the parents. However, if you have a child with a translocation Down syndrome, it's important to karyotype the parents because in a small percentage, it can be inherited from one of the parents. The parents will never have a problem because they, ha they you know, have what we call a balanced translocation state. So if you have a parent who's a balanced translocation carrier, he will have a total of 45 chromosomes because the 45th, 46th chromosome is piggybacked onto another one. Carriers who are translocation, uh, sorry, parents who are translocation carriers, if it's uh, depending upon the sex of the translocation carrier, they will bestow about a 5 to 15% risk of recurrence in the next pregnancy. The clinical phenotype does not differ between translocation carriers or free trisomy 21. The last is a mosaic Down syndrome where we have two cell lines. One cell line has a normal set of chromosomes. The second cell line has trisomy 21. This is usually a post-psychotic event and mosaic phenotypes are milder than full trisomy 21 phenotypes, the exact depending upon, you know, what is the percentage of the normal cell line versus the percentage of the, the cell line which has got trisomy 21. And mosaicism is best studied either by doing a FISH test, which is the fluorescent in situ hybridization, because there you can study 100 and 200 cells. Usually we do it in interphase, or you can also check it in a karyotype, but there you'll have to, you know, read many more karyotypes, which is not so easy in the laboratory. Uh, Ma'am, may I also request you to please discuss the prenatal diagnosis uh, that is uh, available to diagnose uh, Down yeah. syndrome? So I've already alluded to you that if it's a free trisomy 21 or it's a translocation, the importance is for recurrence risk. If it's a free trisomy 21, the recurrence risk is 1%. If it's a translocation trisomy 21, it's 5 to 15%, depending upon the sex of the parent. And for mosaicism, there's no increased risk of recurrence. Now, we've already talked about initially that the, the, you know, the risk of Down syndrome is dependent upon the maternal age, but it's important to understand that a woman at any age can have a child with Down syndrome. 
We had done a study about 10, 10 years ago to understand what is the age of you know, parents who have a child with Down syndrome uh, in Gangaram and 90% of them were young mothers because that's the bulk of the reproductive population, which is now changing. But it, it essentially means that when you're doing screening, you're screening a general population to identify a high risk population. So screening is done through the first and second trimester using ultrasound as well as biochemical markers. The ultrasound in the first trimester, you look at nuchal translucency. In the second trimester, you look at a host of soft markers that are noted here. However, just doing this on its own is not adequate. We have to, in the first trimester, look at the PAPE and the free beta HCG, combine it with the nuchal translucency to what we call a combined first trimester screen, which has a sensitivity of 85%. If the patient doesn't come to you in the first trimester, you do a quadruple screen in the second trimester using four biochemical markers, which is AFP, the advantage of that is it also gives you a risk for neural tube defects, which are still very common in our country. Unconjugated estriol inhibin and free beta HCG. And this combines together to give a screen risk. And if it is screen positive, then you can do what is called a invasive testing, which is the diagnostic test where we take a sample of amniotic fluid or the placenta to look at the chromosomes by a karyotype. The new test that has come in is the cell-free fetal DNA. We take the maternal blood after about 10 to 11 weeks of pregnancy, take out the fetal DNA from that and use various next generation sequencing techniques to identify whether the chromosome 21 of the fetus is three or they are two. It cannot determine or differentiate the other kinds. Now there are, there's a whole issue about NIPT, but I think just an introduction to the topic is adequate. But as a screening test, it is extremely good. It's got a sensitivity of 98 to 99% for Down syndrome, but it's a screening test. And any screen positive on NIPT has to be confirmed by a diagnostic test. Uh, what are the symptoms commonly observed in Down syndrome? Dr. Shifid Pansal, please. Yes. Uh, so, Madam, uh, signs and symptoms most commonly the child is usually brought by with a complaint of global developmental delay um, seen in most of the children. And then there are physical and intellectual disabilities. These children are very prone to uh, catching infections, all kind of colds. They have poor immunity in general. Congenital heart defects like endocardial cushion defects. Epilepsy, as told by Praveen sir in detail, ki the incidence of epilepsy is almost twice more common in these kids than others. Leukemia, thyroid disease, autoimmune disorders. And, uh, multiple, and uh, psychosis is also one of the predominant sim uh, symptoms in many of these kids. Then there are multiple physical features in uh, kids with Down syndrome, like a small chin or a slanted, a slanting, uh, slanted eye like a Mongol child, the poor muscle tone, flat nasal bridge and a single crease of the palm, and a protruding tongue due to a small mouth and relatively large tongue. Uh, because of this, the, uh, common, another common symptom that comes is obstructive sleep apnea. They have short neck with excessive joint flexibility and extra space between big toe and second toe, which is called sandal gap. And there is abnormal pattern on the fingertips and short fingers and uh, atlanto axial joint as discussed by Praveen sir is quite common. The instability is quite common up to 20%, which frequently leads to spinal cord injury in 1-2% to 2 of the cases. Now, hip dislocation may occur without trauma in up to a third of people with Down syndrome. And usually they are short statured, as we saw in many photos shown by Shifali ma'am. Most of the actors were short statured, and there is increased risk of obesity as they age. Uh, what are the neurological manifestations in children with Down syndrome? Uh, request Dr. Rachna Saikal, ma'am, to please take on this. Uh, thank you, Dr. Prajita. Actually, my job has been made much easier by a very comprehensive talk already by Dr. Praveen. But I will just summarize what are the common neurological features. Actually, the neurological features uh, can be divided into the neurological, behavioral, and psychiatric and neurovascular features. So uh, the neurologically, as we have already uh, gone so far, that the children do have global developmental delay. So they have intellectual disability, more so for the speech and language component, as well as the motor component. Some of them also develop autism. Some have associated comorbidities like ADHD. The other major manifestations can be depression, obsessive compulsive disorder, 
and sometimes you see a even a childhood disintegrative disorders then epilepsy is a very very common component which has been extensively discussed so far and uh, later onset alzheimer ma'am you're on mute ma'am yeah i was accidentally muted by host i guess so uh, i think uh, yeah the next question can be taken up Uh, may I request Dr. Mahesh Kamble sir to take on this. What is the disintegrative disorder associated with Down syndrome? Yeah, uh, this is one of the important uh, complications. What is seen in uh, seen in Down syndrome uh, children, especially in uh, adolescent age group, it is a condition uh, called as Down syndrome with disintegrative disorder. In this case, there is autistic like regression and dementia occurring at an older age than uh, usual age for autism. Uh, that is between eleven to fourteen years. Many children present with uh, catatonia, depression, delusions, stereotypies, decreased self-care functioning, whispering, and reduced academic uh, skills. The symptoms can evolve over a period of few uh, weeks, even up to a few months also. And uh, this condition resembles autism, but uh, as mentioned, the age at which it uh, occurs is a bit later, 11 to 14 years of age. And there is an autistic relation with uh, dementia as the main uh, features. And uh, there is an... Uh, uh, thought that it could be an autoimmune uh, condition and hence there is a role for even uh, immunotherapy in the form of IVIG or uh, methylprednisolone and the oral uh, steroids along with uh, rituximab which can be used. To treat symptoms like catatonia, we can uh, use high-dose benzodiazepines and there is a role for even uh, SSRIs and uh, antipsychotics to treat the symptoms in this uh, condition. It's a rare condition but it's important to pick it up because if we treat it early, the outcomes can be better. Uh, sir, what is the most common cause of stroke in children with Down syndrome? Uh, stroke is another uh, important and uh, uh, complication is seen in uh, Down syndrome babies. And the most common cause of stroke in Down syndrome babies is uh, Moyamaya disease. This will follow the completion of uh, the congenital uh, heart disease which babies, these babies can have. Because of a CHD, it can be a cardiomyelic stroke. But if there is no underlying CHD, then one of the important cause for uh, stroke in Down syndrome is uh, Moyamaya syndrome. As we all know, Moyamaya syndrome is a chronic vasculopathy wherein we have uh, occlusion or stenosis of the distal intercated artery and the proximal uh, middle cerebral artery or uh, the <coughs> anterior cerebral artery. Usually it's a bilateral disease and there is uh, a uh, collateral form formation which will uh, uh, due to anastomosis from the internal and external catheter arteries. These collaterals will give the typical uh, puff of smoke appearance on uh, uh, DSA. Uh, it is more common in uh, children with Down syndrome as compared to the normal population. It's almost three times more common than in the normal population. The main causes of uh, Moya Moya disease or syndrome in Down syndrome is due to the uh, location of the genes on uh, chromosome 21. As you all know, genes like SOD1, interferon gamma receptor, cystathionin beta synthase, and alpha chains of collagen type 6 are found on chromosome 21. So in children with Down syndrome, due to uh, affection of these genes, there is a risk for uh, vascular disease and it can present as a uh, Moya Moya disease. And the Moya Moya disease syndrome has to be tackled surgically and they don't respond to medical line of treatment. Thank you, sir. And uh, ma'am, uh, Dr. Rachan Cycle, ma'am, uh, can you please take on this? Is epilepsy more common in children with Down syndrome? Yeah. Uh, Prajita, yeah, epilepsy is uh, much more commoner. In fact, if we look at the global population risk of epilepsy, there is a variation in the normal population. The risk is three to eight per thousand, depending upon whether it is a developed country or a developing nation. And if we see it is in uh, per hundreds, the risk increases to eight to 26 percent in children with Down syndrome. So there is a many fold increase, at least 10 uh, fold increase in the incidence of uh, the seizure seen in Down syndrome. And in fact, uh, it is a it is across the age span of Down syndrome that we see epilepsy. In the first 10 years of age, there is an increased risk. And then in the adulthood, there is an increased risk. Within the first 10 years, in the initial two years, we have more commonly infantile spasms that are seen. And the EEG correlate is of hip arrhythmia and different variants. So early recognition of these spasms and also the management, appropriate management, will help in a very good outcome in these cases. Later on, we have generalized tonic-clonic seizures 
in the first 10 years. And uh, in the adulthood, we can have either myoclonic epilepsy or generalized seizures, which may turn out to be even progressive myoclonic epilepsy type. Yeah. So uh, it is important to recognize that epilepsy is a very, very important treatable comorbidity present in the children with Down syndrome. Uh, what are the cardiovascular manifestations of children with Down syndrome? Uh, may I request Dr. Neera Jatavan to speak on this? Yeah, so, you know, we all have understood that Down syndrome has high incidence of cardiovascular anomalies. Around 50% would have Down Down syndrome will have cardiac anomalies. And the most common anomaly is a AV canal defect, where you have ASD, VSD, and common AV valve among the asanatic group and the, and the cyanotic group you have tetralogy of fallow these two disorders are very very common in indian scenario in the other countries in the other western world that the difference incidence can happen the most common defects are av canal defect and tox so other disorders like vsd pd asd you can have but i would go with the av canal and tox as the most common disorders in the down syndrome patient then the other factor is the other diseases which is not csd is pulmonary arterial, arterial hypertension it's a very unique problem in Down syndrome, more common than other patients, mainly because of lower or upper airway anomalies. They have hypotonia, different, uh, the different morphology of the upper airways, which can lead to pH. And this is not a congenital anomaly. pH means it can happen over time. Like if, if it's normal today, it can happen after five years. So that's why screening is recommended throughout child, childhood and adulthood also. So every year, ECHO has to be done, even if they don't have a congenital defect. So I would recommend ECHO every year for this Down syndrome. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, may I request Dr. Anup, uh, Anup Kumar to take on this? What are the hematological manifestations of children with Down syndrome? Actually, the leukemia part is very common in children with Down syndrome. Uh, this is 20 times more common than the general population. And the megakaryoblastic form of AML is 500 times more common than the general population. This uh, ALL is also uh, accounts for around 1 to 3 percent of all childhood cases of ALL, and they have got the poorer outcome than the other cases of ALL without Down syndrome in the general population. Next slide, please. Previous slide, please. Previous slide, please. So this acute megakaryoblastic uh, leukemia is typically preceded by the transient myeloproliferative disease. Uh, uh, this myeloproliferative disease is a disorder of blood cell production in which non-cancerous megakaryoblasts with mutation in the GATA1 gene rapidly divide into during the later period of the pregnancy. And it occurs in 3 to 10 percent of the babies with Down syndrome. And it often spontaneously resolves within three months of the birth. But in about 10% of the cases, this TMD progresses to, to the acute megakaryoblastic leukemia during three months to five years following its resolution. Next slide, please. So I, as I have already uh, discussed transient abnormal myelopolysis in the and, and less than 10% cases, leukemia and tumor in 2 to 3% cases. And there is uh, chances of the anemia or iron deficiency anemia in uh, this Down syndrome. Next slide, please. So, uh, as we have seen, the there are higher chances of getting uh, cancer in Down syndrome. So, uh, we can have the higher chances of the hematological cancers in the Down syndrome cases. All the type, uh, the most is the AML is the most common type of among all the uh, type of the cancer which are present in the Down syndrome. Next slide. So, as I, I have already discussed about this, uh, the cause of the myeloid leukemia in Down syndrome is the GATA1 mutation along with the tri trisomy 1. So, as the age advances, uh, usually uh, in earlier age of the, the child with the Down syndrome, this uh, AMT resolve, TMD resolve, but if it persists, it changes into the myeloid leukemia. Thanks. Uh, what are the endocrinological abnormalities in children with Down syndrome? Uh, request Dr. Vijay Jaiswal to please take on this. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Uh, 
sorry for interruption. Yes, so endocrinal abnormalities are quite common in comparison to the general population in Down syndrome cases. The commonest one is thyroid abnormalities and uh, the umbrella uh, symptoms can be there. That is from congenital hypothyroidism that is about 1% to the spectrum of hypothyroidism that is autoimmune hypothyroidism as well as thyrocoxcosis that is Graves disease can be there. So the, we should screen uh, rather on a very frequent interval. It doesn't mean that once a child has been screened for thyroid disorders at that particular year, he should be screened annually because they are at high risk for that. Are children with Down syndrome prone for autoimmune disorders, sir? Yes, definitely. Uh, these children are quite prone for autoimmune disorders and uh, we can emulate that uh, thyrotoxicosis, that is Hashimoto thyroiditis, type 1 diabetes is about four to five to uh, times more common in Down syndrome children. Alopecia as well as dermatological manifestation. Celiac is a quite silent disease in uh, type uh, di diabetes with these children with Down syndrome. Uh, arthritis, immune arthritis, as well as we have discussed that uh, since the commonest disorder in Down syndrome as endocrine manifestation is thyroid disorder. So we should screen on annual basis. So that is the thing that we have to see. Uh, what are the gastrointestinal manifestations in children with Down syndrome? Dr. Sapna Gupta, please. Uh, yes, yes. Thank you, Dr. Aprajita. Uh, so as it has been seen that uh, children with Down syndromes more often suffer from gastrointestinal disorders. And among all these, constipation is the most common. It occurs in nearly half of the people with Down syndrome. And it has contributed to the fact that uh, this, the children with Down syndrome have low muscle tone. And secondly, maybe because of diet, inadequate food intake. And this can be uh, like taken out if they take more of fluids. But somehow they are also prone to have Hirschsprung's disease which occurs in about 2 to 15% of the cases. And uh, then celiac disease accounts for about 7 to 20% of the cases in children with Down syndrome. Other frequent congenital problems, which includes duodenal atresia, pyloric stenosis, Meckel's diverticulum, and imperforate inners. Gastroesophageal reflux disease is also very common we see in children with Down syndrome. Dr. Sopna, are children with Down syndrome prone to develop oral health problems? Yes, they are more prone for getting oral health problem. And uh, the periodontitis is most common. And although the etiology of the condition is not yet fully elucidated, a number of studies have shown that uh, Down syndrome is related to periodontitis because of certain factors. Like they have got immunological deficiency, then they have got poor oral hygiene, then they have fragile periodontal tissue, salivary deficiency, and poor masticatory functions, which may be contributing to all these conditions of oral cavity. So they are susceptible to gingivitis, the necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis and early tooth loss. They have got uh, higher rates of tooth wear and bruxism are also very common. They have got enlarged hypotonic tongue, crusted and hypotonic lips, they are mouth breathers. They have got narrow palate with crowded teeth. They have got malocclusion with an underdeveloped maxilla and posterior crossbite. Also, they are prone for delayed exfoliation of the baby teeth and delayed eruption of adult teeth. Less common manifestations include cleft lip and palate and enamel hypocalcification. About 20% of the cases. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sapna. Uh, how do we proceed for screening at birth in children with Down syndrome? Request Dr. Anup Kumar to take on this. Yeah. Uh, next slide, please. So, uh, ECG and echocardiography of heart is very necessary to rule out the severe uh, cardiac anomalies uh, in the heart because uh, uh, surgical intervention may be required as early as possible, as early as three months of the age. Audiogram for hearing like autoacoustic emission should be done in all cases to rule out hearing uh, defect and in the uh, and the, if the child uh, does not pass the test, he, uh, the child should be referred for the BARA. 
thyroid screening as dr vijay jaiswal has already said uh, that should be done as early as possible and every uh, first six month then every yearly it should be done and uh, uh, transient abnormal myelopoiesis the screening should be done for that by the blood next slide please so uh, this is the recommendation uh, timing of the screening He, uh, hearing we should screen at 6 month of the age 12 month of the age then yearly <laughs> in adults it should be screened every 3 to 5 years t4 tsh should be screened at 6 month then yearly ie should be screened 6 month then yearly in adults every 3 to 5 years t should be examined every 2 year then every 6 month child should be screened for celiac disease between 2 to 3 years of the age or earlier if symptoms occurs sleep study should be done in all children uh, at the age of 3 to 4 years or earlier if symptoms of osa are there and neck x ray should be done between 3 to 5 years of the age to rule out the sublux uh, subluxation of the atlanto axial joint next thank you uh, so the most important question i think is is there any ethical issues related to prenatal screening because of the ratna speech of this second year okay so see screening is entirely um a voluntary thing it's not something that we say go and get the test done every genetic test whether it's a screening test or it's a diagnostic test has something which is referred to as a pre test counseling and a post test counseling and i think it's very important for each one of us who are doing genetic tests whether they are screening or diagnostic to understand and what is the pre test counseling entail it talks about why are we doing the test what is down syndrome somebody might say i it doesn't matter to me i don't want screening so which is fair then you would not do the screening test so the the ethics come in if we force somebody to do either a screening test or we force somebody to do a diagnostic test or even if the child is diagnosed to have down syndrome if as a doctor we say no 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 you must discontinue the pregnancy all these tests are optional for patients and parents they must understand what the test is why it is being done and what are the outcomes of the test if you do a screening test and it comes at screen positive and we haven't you know discussed with them that it doesn't mean that the child has the disease it only means that we need to do further testing to confirm i think these things are very very relevant thank you ma'am uh, so just to we finish with the panel discussions uh, just to make it more interesting um uh, Dr. Shivali had already shown the photograph of this girl. We try to choose the Indian children who have uh, Down syndrome. So anybody, if you can uh, write in the chat box, uh, if anybody of you remember this uh, girl, she is actually Riza Reji. She uh, walked uh, for the annual fashion show in July 2022. Be beautiful, be yourself. It was uh, done by Global Down Syndrome Foundation. Which included twenty models uh, with uh, Down syndrome. Okay, next slide, please. Next slide. And she is Aditi Verma. She is a young entrepreneur from Navi Mumbai who runs her own cafe along with her parents. And then she is Danica Zagasia. She is a nineteen-year-old model with Down syndrome. She works for Gucci. And then, okay, next slide, please. Uh, Aditya Tiwari. He was adopted by a single father, Mr. Abhish Tiwari. He is a seven-year-old child, and both father and son they trek to the Everest base camp in April 22. So he is a young achiever. Then next slide, please. Dhania Vijayan. She is a 33-year-old dancer from Kozhikode in Kerala. She is a trained, uh, trained classical dancer. She runs her own dance school. And also is a theatre artist and has uh, uh, bagged a few awards. And I would uh, like any one of you to answer this: Which country has almost eliminated the Down syndrome? Uh, so it's Iceland. So their uh, screening is almost hundred percent, and uh, anybody who screens positive or is uh, di- uh, prenatal diagnosis of Down syndrome is there, then hundred percent abortion rate. a portion is done for that uh, uh, fetus who is the oldest uh, woman living with down syndrome 
So she was Frances Gillett. She was born in 1941. Although the age, uh, average age of a Down syndrome uh, individual is about 60 years, but she is uh, till un until last year she was around 75 years of age. And then there is a story of Baby Doe. So uh, Baby Doe's case was a uh, he was a boy who was born born with Down syndrome and had a malformed esophagus in uh, Bloomington, Indiana. And the doctors and parents at that time, they decided to withhold surgery on his esophagus and thus starve him to death. Following this, there were a lot of repercussions. The doctor was charged with a murder charge. And then there was an amendment uh, also known as Baby Doe Law or Baby Doe Amendment. And in which uh, uh, in cases like this, uh, infant, the, these kind of cases, the medical practitioner had to refer these cases to the infant care review committee. Uh, to advise the hospital and to alert the courts or a child protective agency. And uh, these are the dual divas of Down syndrome. So as early as 16th century, this is a very famous painting, the adoration of Christ child. It is the earliest European depiction of Down syndrome. Uh, if you see the uh, child next to Mary, the child has uh, probably has Down syndrome and the individual standing in the middle that individual also probably has Down syndrome. So these are the earliest European depictions of Down syndrome. And uh, with this, we come to the end of our panel discussion. And uh, any uh, comments by the audience or any uh, questions to be asked? You're most welcome. Ma'am, questions are there in the chat box. We are, we are posting the group. Aprajita, you can uh, go through the questions in the chat box and okay, uh, address yeah, address to the panelists. They can even Dr. Praveen can join in and Dr. Ajay can join. In. So, Friday, we submitted talks earlier. How to measure for Atlanto actual distance on lateral? Yeah, tomorrow. Uh, request. Uh, Dr. Rachana or Dr. Mahesh to take on this? Okay, I'll do that. I'll do that one. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Dr. Praveen had shown the slide. He can also say if he wants. Yeah. Dr. Praveen, sir? Yeah. Ma'am. Will I take I this? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely, ma'am. Yeah. I'll bring him up and so I'll actually, ask. the screening for Atlanto axial uh, dislocation or uh, instability can be done through either the lateral radiographs of the skull or through the MRI. Earlier, in fact, uh, in the 2011 recommendation of American Academy of Pediatrics had recommended that uh, there should be screening prophylactically for atlanto axial instability using the lateral radiographs. This is now coming under dispute because many cases are not picked up on radiographs. And uh, now MRI is the more uh, uh, useful modality. And uh, some people even recommend that it should be done between uh, once between five to 10 years of age and then in the adulthood. And also if somebody is uh, planning to take up contact sports, it is to be done before that. And in the lateral view, if we measure the distance between the posterior margin of the atlas and the anterior margin of the, uh, the, uh, the axis, that is the distance uh, which is to be measured for the Atlanto axial uh, this thing. And uh, it is important while doing the imaging also to not to too much extend or flex the neck. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. So the next question is, are there any down-like states to showing minor phenotypical features and minor cognitive defects as opposed to full-blown Down syndrome? Uh, uh, may I request Dr. Ratnapuri, ma'am, to please take on this? Yeah, I'm just trying. What is what was the question? Are there any Downs like states to show? Minor. All children with Down syndrome may not have the entire full blown picture. Some phenotypes are subtle, yes. but uh, the, the, the cytogenetics, which can cause a milder phenotype, like I had already said, is a mosaic phenotype, which is mild. But, you know, we know that everybody, only 40% will have a congenital heart disease. Uh, up, up to 15 to 20% may have a behavior disorder, may have autism spectrum disorder. But as far as the facial phenotype goes, even that can change. All children with the same. 
But yes, it is a gestalt diagnosis, as we say it. But clinically, there is no difference between trisomy 21 or translocation Down syndrome. Thank you. Is there any Down syndrome community in India for educational and occupational therapy? I think Dr. Rachna has already answered that, Down syndrome Federation of India. Uh, and then uh, Dr. Vijay Jaiswal has answered, males with Down syndrome may have both Sertoli and Leydig cell dysfunction and fertility less fertility. So I don't see any more questions in the chat box. So ma'am, uh, uh, can we... Conclude the panel discussion, ma'am. One question was there. Please explain why they are are they having increased incidence of infection, low immunity. Okay, I think uh, Dr. Bachchan has uh, explained it. Cellular uh, immunity and leukocyte addition defects. Cellular immunity is decreased in uh, children with Down syndrome. This has already been answered. Down syndrome community for education. Yeah, this has already been answered. Ma'am, can we... Uh... Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, Dr. Uh, Rashmi, ma'am, you want to say something? Final concluding remarks? Ma'am, you are on mute. Rashmi, ma'am, you are on mute. Okay, that's better. So I was just saying that it's a very, it's been a very, very comprehensive coverage of all possible aspects of uh, this condition and uh, including all the recent advances and all, uh, you know, even things, uh, social things and how Down syndrome uh, uh, individuals have, uh, you know, have become prominent in their fields and they've uh, risen uh, to uh, you know, take on the world, literally. So I must congratulate everyone, all the speakers, all the panelists, very good presentations and very, very comprehensively uh, designed and covered. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. And I think uh, prevention is always better than cure. So one has to remember that. And when you have one patient in the family, we should ensure that, you know, next patient is not going to be, uh, I mean, you have to do a full genetic counseling and prenatal diagnosis. And probably uh, Dr. Ratna, maybe the pre-implantation genetic diagnosis is going to come up in the future, basically, and we have to make the best out of then make them maximize their potential and also don't forget the long term complications which are there, which the multidisciplinary, you know, approach has already told. Uh, so I think uh, we can come to an end with Dr. Yogesh Dixit and Dr. Arun Jain uh, giving vote of thanks, right? Dr. Dr. Yogesh Dixit and Dr. Arun Jain, yeah, for a vote of thanks. Thank you.